Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds by nerds, hanging out with Nerdarchy is Ted. And today we continue exploring Eberron and why 5th edition Dungeons Dragons need it, needs it with Monstrous Nations. Hey, jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So our, our series in, uh, into Eberron and why 5th edition needs it continues. This time we're going to talk about Monster Nations. So we have we have you know two really cool monster monster nations that totally make Eberron an awesome thing. So one thing worth mentioning though is Kover, which is the main continent of Eberron, is actually built upon a monster nation. the the ancient The ancient empire of the Dukani are basically goblinoids. Uh, basically, all the goblinoids really, and they were spread out throughout Kover. But the Dactyl War happened. Which, if, if, for you guys that are not familiar with Eberron, think Far Realm, think Cthulhu. Uh, you know, they invade, decimate things, and you know, basically totally destroys that empire. But it's, it's important and worth noting because it means these uh, Dakani ruins are, ruins are all over the continent of Kaver, where a lot of the adventuring takes place in Eberron. Right, and that, that, leads, or that leaves the world full of places for adventurers to go and explore and come on man who, who doesn't want more adventurers want more places to adventure and it also dovetails back into when we go into the monster nations uh one of which speaking of Dakani, is now dargoon uh which is basically the goblinoids trying to reestablish their 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 foothold in the world their dominance and and really it is because of the the last war that they're able to uh, House Deneath actually goes into where it, you know where all the goblinoids are and starts recruiting them and making them mercenaries, and I believe it's Breland and Seer that use them heavily in towards the end of the last war. Well, you know what happens is a, a, a you know a hobgoblin general rises up amongst them. Uh, Harak, I believe his name is Harak. Not to be confused with our Griffin Gaff campaign, but uh, Harak rises up and, and starts begin, begins getting all the other chieftains together and gathering them under one banner, or banner, and they betray their employers. And they, I, I would pronounce it Haruk because it's H A R U U. Haruk, you're probably right. It sounds better that way too. But you guys, if you've been around for a while, you know I can't read or spell or speak or anything. I don't even know why they let me on these videos. Um, yeah, so he got he gathers them all together. And they betray their employers. Well, the, a war is raging. Breland is like, oh, we can't deal with this right now. Seer keeps fighting them to the bitter end. You know, but they're able to car, you know, carve out th this domain. And when the last war finally ends, the Treaty, of, the Treaty of Thronehold happens. Everyone is sick of fighting. Everyone is fed up. Seer has been wiped from the map and no longer really exists. And everyone's like, eh? Should we just give it to them? <laughs> you know, they're goblins. They're going to kill each other eventually anyway, and then the, the problem's going to solve itself. Well, so far, the problem hasn't, hasn't solved, solved it. itself. And, and one of the inter interesting things, when you brought when you bring up, um, you know, the Connie Empire and um, the, the ruins, there's actually a sect within Dargoon, um, the Ketch Volaire. Sorry, guys, I got notes here. You call me, uh, and the the word bearers, and really like they they want to bring back um, Dargoon and the Dakani Empire, and one of the ways that they're trying to do it is by gathering relics, thinking that they're also going to find powerful magic items. So this way, they can dis dispose of Harak, Haruk, Haruk, <laughs> and uh, you know insert themselves as leadership and take take over Dargoon. So I mean, anytime you've got this mass of bugbears, goblins, and, and hobgoblins, you know, crazy stuff is, is going to happen. So it's what, what you want to do with it in, in your game. You, you could totally have them you know, g go off and be an awesome place to adventure and, and what have you. Well, also, too, goblin politics, right? You can jump in. Like, there's another there's another set called the, the Kesh Sarat, and their thing is like they they kind of like more traditional and ancient ways, and you know one of their leaders is like going out and and basically challenging the other clans and absorbing them, and right now he bows to the leadership of um, Haruk as the high warlord, 
but if he gains enough influence and power, it, you know, he, he wants to challenge. He wants to challenge him and dispose of him as a pretender. Seems uh, seems like a pretty cool plan. Well, it is. So there, there's there's tons of stuff going on that you could add right into your game. Uh, so uh, there's also another sect that kind of talk about and like in the Gray Wall Mountains, there's these um, bugbear tribes, and you know, there's one that is like totally hostile, to pretty much anybody. You know, including the other goblinoids. So, and also too, like if you like if you read the books and you kind of delve into it, they really go into um, goblin culture and goblin culture, and and they really make them distinct. You know, you the they they make really fearsome goblins that you're gonna want. They, they reading about them, they're freaking scary. They're like tiny nin, children ninjas of the night that will murder you. Kind of reminds me of the. Um... Uh, the undead creatures in um, Mummy: The Return. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's like it's just like that, only maybe not quite as scary. <laughs> so again, Dargoon is chock full of places the adventure. You know whether you're whether you're looking at it from pop, from a political stance, uh, things to discover, quest givers. I mean, the catch Valor could hire adventurers to kind to kind of like steal artifacts for them, and and uh, reclaim help them reclaim their heritage or. They could actually be enemies of the players because they've uncovered this stuff, and now they they want it, and they also feel like they basically feel like them that anyone having it that's not a goblinoid is really you know is, is has stolen it is appropriated their culture, and you know them taking it back is actually they're doing the right thing. Now you could you could take these kind of implements and mo- move them in your world so that. You know, perhaps you want to take the timeline ahead a little while, and perhaps their power base has grown, and they've they've completely united. You know, beyond what what's you know what what's already history, and they're now posing a, a considerable threat. With the Warforged Forge being shut down, there's no more Insta Army anymore, so you have to literally use the population that's there. So. What if this was a, a, a back to being a credible threat to the world again? Well, not only that too. Like uh, House Deneath and House Thrask, they still have they're st- they're still prominent in Dargoon too. They still want to use them for mercenaries, and House Thrask is always looking at for different places to mine dragon shards. Right, uh, Dr- Drum is a nation of monsters that's ruled by uh, hags, the daughters of Sora Kel. Yeah, you can actually find all kinds of different monsters kind of cooperating. It's really weird because the way it's described, their their social structure or organ, um, organization is described as a um, despotic feudalism <laughs> is the way it's described. And so basically the sisters are like, anything goes, as long as you don't F with us trying to become a legitimate nation, don't really care. And as long as you guys aren't killing each other too much, <laughs> they're kind of like, eh. Whatever you know, you know, call the weak from the from the shaft as as you will. Right. Uh, you know, it also becomes this like haven for criminals, because they are not part of the Thronehold Treaty. They actually were declined. They wanted in. They couldn't get in. They're not. Again, you know, just like Dargoon, these other nations are like, ah, eh, you know, it's gonna fall apart. How long can they hold it together? But you know, these hags kind of came out of nowhere, and they're pulling things together. Uh, there's two dragon houses that kind of had a, have a toehold. There's a one Orion uh, uh, road that's maintained that goes through there. So, so, so the, that house is in there. You have House Thrask that's trying to get in there as well, because they try and get in everywhere is where they think they can, <laughs> where they think they can mine. But here it's uh, dragon shards as well as the Biresh metal, which is a special metal that uh, has certain properties that, uh, if I remember correctly. Something to do with psionics, but it was also used against the dactyl, so it, it's kind of precious, and, and there's only so many places you can get it. So the 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 drome is you know really into you know the dark religions, the 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 shadow, the mockery, and of course the dark sex. Yeah, well, and that being said, like anything kind of goes, but when it comes to religions, the one that's kind of like off limits is Church of the Silver Flame. It, your your life is in danger if you openly worship the Church of the Silver Flame and you go into Drome because that church has been known and that religion has been known to persecute monstrous races. 
so they're not going to be particularly friendly towards you. <laughs> and why on earth would you want to worship a silver flame and go there except to purge and cleanse? Right. So, so that would be a ba- bad idea. Uh, you also, uh, a, a pro- there's two prominent features. I mean, there's a bunch of cities and stuff, but the, the, the ones that stand out are Grey Wall. And that's kind of like on the border, and it's actually, it actually has a mayor that's an illithid, which is pretty cool. And that's where you're going to f- probably find the most diversity. You know, more trading is going to happen there than any place else. The only thing Drome really has to export at this point is mercenaries. Though there are there are dragon shard fields, which I mean, Thrask is trying to get in there and get get those out. And there is the mining, but the problem is the you know the designants, the residents of Drome themselves aren't really doing the mining and producing this stuff. Now, Hastarask is having much better inroads into Drome than they are with Dargoon, because with Dargoon, there's racial tensions between uh, the goblins and orcs. Right. Well, as here, the orcs don't really have that, that competing factor. And because they are you know, kind of considered a monstrous race, it does allow them to get in, and they're the only ones that are actually represented in their seat of power, which is the, the Great Crag. Yeah, the Great Crag is the capital. That's where the sisters can be found. And there's some other fi- figures like the Stone Queen uh, and a bunch of others in there. Um, and they're, you know, again, all monstrous. So this is a great place for adventurers to go. You know, they could be working for the sisters. They could be working for any of the power bases. It could be that, you know, one of the warlords needs outsiders to do something. Or, you know, it, you know someone could be trying to establish political connections and diplomacy with within Jerome, so maybe the players get sent in there. So there's definitely tons of seed, seeds of adventure. You could be a bounty hunter looking for a criminal in Greywall. You could be a criminal in Greywall hiding out from bounty hunters. There's so many ways you could go with it. I don't know what you guys think about the, the monster nations. I think they're awesome. I've always been, you know, fond of monsters and monstrous humanoids. And when you have literal seats of power represented by these monsters it makes the world that much more awesome that much more enjoyable there there is one thing that i'd like to add to that and that is uh there is sharn has a section called the melian's gate which is basically a goblin ghetto and you can find other monsters as well so it, you know the cool thing the monsters have kind of infiltrated throughout the world of of Eberron, so you can find them all over the place, and that's what else even go into the other another continent like Zendrick, but uh, you know just staying on Kaver. So as said, you know if you want to you know continue the conversation down down below while you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can check us out over on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy. Ebron and why fifth edition needs it continues. This time we're going to talk about monster nations. All right, so we have we have you know two really cool monster monster nations that totally make Eberron an awesome thing. So one thing worth mentioning though is Kover, which is the main continent of Eberron, is actually built upon a monster nation. the the ancient The ancient empire of the Dukani are basically goblinoid. Is basically the goblinoids trying to reestablish their 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 foothold in the world their dominance and and really it is because of the the last war that they're able to uh house deneath actually goes into where it, you know where all the goblinoids are and starts recruiting them and making them mercenaries and i believe it's breland and seer that use them it's uh basically all the goblinoids really and they were spread out throughout caver but the dactyl war happened which, if, if, for you guys that are not familiar with Eberron, think Far Realm, think Cthulhu. Uh, you know, they invade, decimate things, and you know, basically totally destroys that empire. But it's, it's important and worth noting because it means these uh, Dakani ruins are, ruins are all over the continent. Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds by nerds, hanging out with... Nerdark is dead. And today we continue exploring Eberron and why 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons need it, needs it with Monstrous Nations. Hey, jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So our our series in uh, into Kaver, where a lot of the adventuring takes place in Eberron. Right, and that that leads or that leaves the world full of places for adventurers to go and explore. And come on, man, who who doesn't want more adventurers? Want more 
places to adventure. And it also dovetails back into when we go into the Monster Nations, uh, one of which, speaking of Dakani, is now Dargoon, uh, which is...